Welcome back to another video in our functions unit. This one is on piecewise functions, a strange name, but we'll figure it all out. Now, when we talk about piecewise functions, what we're talking about are functions that are made up of several pieces of different functions. Piecewise is a pretty clever name in that case, don't you think? So a function that's made up of pieces of other functions is going to be a little bit more confusing than those straightforward functions that we've learned so far. But they're not that bad. It's more confusing in the way the rules are written than it is in the math itself. So when they give us a question on piecewise functions, they're often going to give us a graph that goes with it, just like the one you see on the screen here. This one is showing the height of a rocket in a science experiment as a function of the time since it was set off. Now the graph itself is pretty straightforward. We can see the different pieces to this function. There are three of them and we can see them pretty clearly. But the way we write out the rules for these three pieces to the piecewise function isn't quite as easy to digest. Now let's go through these pieces one by one so we can figure out what the rules are for each of them. Now the first one should be pretty obvious to us as being a quadratic function. That's because it's a curve that passes through the origin. And in this course, anytime we have a curve that's passing through the origin, we know it's a quadratic function. So given that we know the first piece of the function is quadratic and we have a set of coordinates that lies on the curve, well, we're just going to plug them in for x and y, find the a value in y equals ax squared, and then write out the rule. So here you can see after plugging 8 in for x and 8 in for y, because those were my coordinates, my a value comes out to 0 0.125. So the rule for this quadratic piece to my function is y equals 0 0.125x squared. Now it's really important to notice here that this quadratic rule only applies when the x values are between 0 and 8. Look at the function here and notice that this curve, this quadratic piece, only exists when the x values are between 0 and 8. So what this is telling us in real life is that this rocket takes 8 seconds to reach its maximum height. And at 8 seconds, it's no longer rising anymore. So this quadratic function doesn't apply. You can see the function flattens out and becomes linear. So what I'm going to have to do is, beside my quadratic rule, write that it only applies for x values between 0 and 8. And doing this is called restricting the domain of this part of the function. And if you think that sounds nerdy, wait till you see how we write it out. Now notice, I want to represent that my quadratic rule only exists when x is between 0 and 8 for this function. So I'll put an x between 0 and 8. Now we have to write something called inequality signs to make this a mathematically correct statement. We can't just leave the x floating between the 0 and the 8. So I'm going to put in two inequality signs that make this a proper statement. And when I read it out, it says 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 8. Or if we wanted to read this from the inside out, we would just say that x is greater than or equal to 0, if we read that backwards, and x is less than or equal to 8. But for us, those details aren't actually super important. All we need to see here is that x is between 0 and 8, and that makes perfect sense when we look at our graph, and we see that the quadratic function exists for x values between 0 and 8. So this is how it gets written out all nice and proper. y equals 0.125x squared when x is between 0 and 8. Now the second piece to this piecewise function, it's a constant rule, y equals 8. Remember, those flat horizontal lines are always defined by the rule y equals a number. And this one, because the y values are 8, well, it gets the rule y equals 8. And now for that nerdy but very important domain restriction, I've got to say for what x values this rule applies. Notice how the only time we have this flat line in our function is when the x values go from 8 to 12. So I'm going to restrict the domain by putting x between 8 and 12. And of course, I have to add those inequality signs to have it make sense mathematically. But for us, all we need to see here is that when x is greater than or equal to 8 and less than or equal to 12, we've got the constant rule y equals 8. Now finally, on to the third part of this piecewise function. We have a straight line and the very familiar linear function represented by y equals ax plus b. Now we're given two sets of coordinates that lie on this straight line, and remember, anytime we have two sets of coordinates, we can find the rule y equals ax plus b very easily. So I'll go through this a little bit quickly because we already know how to do it, but the first step is to find a. So my formula for a gets filled in with the two sets of coordinates that I've labeled x1, y1, and x2, y2. So a is the slope of my line, and now that I've found it, it's negative 1.3 repeating, I can go ahead and plug it in where I see a in the rule. Now all I need to do is choose a set of coordinates, either x1, y1, or x2, y2, to put in for x and y, and solve for that missing variable, b. 
So I chose to plug in 18 comma zero for X and Y, but you could have just as easily filled in 12 and eight for X and Y, and you'd get the same answer for B in the end. So when I work out the math and I isolate B, I end up with 24 as my answer for B, that's the Y intercept. So with a slope of negative 1.3 repeating and a Y intercept of 24, I've got the rule for this linear equation, Y equals negative 1.3 repeating X plus 24. So this linear rule, of course, only applies when the x values of this function are between 12 and 18. This represents the six seconds that it takes for the rocket to come back to ground level. Look at the graph and you'll see exactly what I mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that domain restriction with an x between 12 and 18, because we're pros at that by now. And I'm gonna fill in the inequality signs because that's what makes this mathematically correct. So now I have a complete piecewise function on a graph and written with the proper notation down below. Now we're going to tidy this up and watch how we do that. The first thing we're going to do is put a curly bracket in front of those three rules. Now notice what those three rules all have in common. They each start with y equals. The first one is y equals 0.125x squared. The second one is y equals 8. And the third one, y equals negative 1.3 repeating x plus 24. Now when we put the curly bracket, we're gonna remove those three y equals to start each of the three rules and just put y equals out front of the curly bracket. So what that means is y equals each of the three rules that follow that bracket. So the curly bracket kind of says, hey, apply this y equals to each of the things that are behind the bracket. So y equals 0.125x squared, y equals eight, and y equals negative 1.3 repeating x plus 24. Now we have to know that it gets written like this because they like to get fancy on exams and they're gonna write it like this if we ever see it written down for us. And of course they like to get really fancy so they're usually gonna write f of x instead of y. And if they do that, it would look like this. f of x equals each of the following three rules. But we're gonna remember that little reminder that f of x and y are the same thing as each other so we can just scratch out f of x and write y underneath. So just so we're all clear with this, the way we would read this, if it's written the way it is on the screen, is that y is equal to 0.125x squared, and y is equal to eight, and y is equal to negative 1.3 repeating x plus 24, all depending on those domain restrictions on the right-hand side. So what that means is that depending on where we're at on the graph, we could see any one of these three rules apply to this function. So on exams, we're usually given piecewise functions, complete with all the rules that we need, just like we built here. So a question likely wouldn't ask us to find out what the rules are, but moreover, given these rules, work out some kind of question they're gonna ask us. So look at this question here. What we're being asked is to find out how much time passes between the two moments where the rocket has a height of six meters. Now, of course, this rocket's gonna pass six meters on its way up to its maximum height of eight meters, and then it's gonna pass six meters again on its way down from its maximum height. Now, of course, the height of the rocket is measured on the y-axis. So all I need to do is at the two points where it crosses six meters for a height, I'm gonna plug six in for y and solve for x. So the first time the rocket passes a height of six meters, we're in the quadratic function. This rocket's on its way up from the ground. So all I need to do is plug six in for y and I'll end up with six equals 0.125x squared. And when I solve for x, I'm gonna have the time that this occurred at. So I'll divide by 0.125 on both sides and then take the square root to finish isolating x. And when we do this, you can see that we end up with an x value of 6.93 seconds. So what this means is the first time this rocket reaches a height of six meters is after exactly 6.93 seconds from launch. And now let's figure out where it passes six meters on its way back down to the ground. That's gonna go into the linear function, the part that shows the rocket descending back down to ground level. So we're gonna end up with six equals negative 1.3 repeating x plus 24. And to figure out x, that's the time that this one happens, I'm just gonna subtract 24 from both sides and then divide by negative 1.3 repeating. And when I do the math here, you can see that my x this time comes out to 13.5 seconds. This is how much time after launch that the rocket passes six meters for the second time this time on its way back down to the ground. Now watch out, we didn't make any mistakes, but we also haven't answered the question yet. They wanna know how much time passes between the two moments that the rocket has a height of six meters. And to find that out, all I have to do is 13.5 minus 6.93. I'm gonna find the difference between these two times. And that comes out to 6.57 seconds. So this means that there are 6.57 seconds between the two instances where this rocket had a height of six meters. And that's the answer to the question they were asking. 
Now before we get to another example, let's write down the steps that we're going to follow when we get these piecewise function questions. First, we're going to identify and number the different pieces to the graph, just to help us stay organized. And if they give us the rules that go with the pieces on the graph, we're going to number those accordingly. Then we're going to check all the rules that were given to us, and if there's any missing information, like we had when we started out this question earlier in the video, then we're going to fill in the missing information in the rules, based on what's given to us in the question. And once the rules are all complete and written out properly, well then we can go ahead and answer the question that they're asking. And we're just going to watch out for all that tricky notation along the way. So we're all set here, time to check out another example on piecewise functions.